just I have I have prepared some slides, hopefully really to break up you listening to me for the next sort of 20 minutes. Uh, some, some videos and some snippets and some of the work. Uh, it is very high level. So I work, my job in, in leading Greater Manchester moving is across the whole of Greater Manchester in quite a strategic role. So some of this is quite a kind of initial sort of very strategic overview with the with the hope really that you can ask questions and we can get into some of the more granular nitty gritty stuff that you might want to um, in our conversation rather than me trying to guess at what's most helpful to you. So, as as I said, you know my my role is in leading GM moving and in terms of what that is, it's we very much call it a movement for movement. So that's very purposeful. Uh, I don't know if we talk about whole systems approach. Basically, what we mean is everyone has a role to play. Moving matters to absolutely everybody for a whole host of reasons, as you know, um, in terms of our mental health, our physical health, our environment, our communities, addressing loneliness, a sense of connection. Um, there's so many things um, that walking and that moving more broadly can bring. Uh, and we know that it's been designed out of our lives and outside of, out of a lot of our places. Um, so we need to design moving and um, walking back into everyday lives for everybody. And to do that, everyone has a role. There's no there's no one uh, organization or person who's going to be able to sort out. So, you know, the roles that you will play in making sure that our footways and bridleways are clear are critical, aren't they? In the same way that we need our senior leaders for their politicians or across health and care and um, planning transport sector to play their role. So that's why we say it's about all of us playing our role. And us, my job really is to help create the conditions in which everyone can play a role and in a way which is going to be effective. So I um I've previously prepared a, a poem which um mm. says what GM moving is uh, in two minutes make it more succinct and hopefully a bit more uh, engaging to listen to. So um, I'm just gonna share this video with the poem uh, to kind of help bring that to life a little bit more. Hopefully, let me know if sound quality isn't very good, David. Now, just optimize sound. It says there's a Peter in the waiting room as well. I don't know if you want to, need to be admitted, David. Right, here we go. Dear Moving is our shared movement for movement, our collective call to enable active lives for all. So we can all move more together, whatever the weather, so we can all move our way, whatever the day. Designing moving in to our places and spaces and increasing the smiles and the sweat on our faces putting the joy back in the journey, encouraging play on the way, making sports more inclusive, removing the barriers, making our facilities fit for purpose for all abilities, ensuring nothing is done about us without us and helping each other to move more each day. Throw a stick for the dog, try a slow jog, take a walk as you talk, fly a kite, take a hike, ride a bike, scooter or trike, cleaning, gardening, DIY, or find something new and give it a try. Together, we can find a way to design moving into everyone's day. So get involved, join in, share your stories on WhatsApp, Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, or Twitter. What's brought you joy? What's made you fitter? A photo, a post, at home, in the park, provides inspiration, creates a ripple and a spark. Write moving into your policy. Put it on the agenda. It's your business too, whatever you do. Moving helps us to take notice, to give and to learn. Happier, healthier and more connected. Moving brings more benefits than we ever expected. Wherever you live, work and play, there's a way to move a little more every day. We are all GM movers, movers and shakers. It's who we are and it's what we do. So hopefully that's given you a taste of the wider lens in terms of GM moving and our mission and what it's all about and the so what. Um, so I'm just going to share now 
some bit more information more specifically around the um, what this means in terms of walking. Oh, sorry, give me a second. <laughs> okay, so in terms of our uh, approach, uh, our, you know, what we see obviously across the whole of Greater Manchester, so that's 2.8 billion people. And as you saw in that video, recognizing that we want to enable everybody to be, to be active and to move and to walk. Um, that means trying to align a whole system. So move from all those arrows pointing in multiple different directions to moving in the same direction to help achieve our collective aim of, of active lives for all. Um, and what we know is that the most inclusive way and the best way in which we can enable active lives for all is actually through walking, cycling, wheeling, everyday moving. That is the way in which we're most likely to particularly support those kind of 30% of the population who are currently are moving less than 30 minutes a week. And to do that in a way which is designed into every day and it also opens up all those other opportunities in terms of connecting with local places and local services with local people, um, noticing your local environment and paying more attention to your local place and to um, the things that make for a green and healthy and cleaner place for us to all live in. So there's so many benefits that then fall out. So that's kind of our general approach. And the way we do this is, um, some of you may be familiar with this idea of a kind of a socioeconomic model, which can sound very technical, um, but really it's just recognising that it's not about just telling individuals that you should go out and walk and making an individualised choice, that we have to recognise that there's all these different influences on whether or not somebody can go out and have a walk, enjoy a walk, or cycle, or wheel, or ride a horse, or ride away. Um, and so you can see there, there's multiple layers. And what we're having to do is constantly think about how we're influencing across all of those layers to create the conditions in which everybody is able to move every day. So when we heard at the beginning, you know, thinking about the work that you do as a society, you know, you might immediately go, well, okay, that, that ring there around the physical environment is probably the most obvious space where, you know, you're really thinking about how we make sure that those pathways um, are clear, that they're accessible, um, and that there are spaces that people can enjoy walking and cycling um, and, riding horse maybe um, but you'll also think about that in order for, to us to achieve that we also need to make sure that it's you know that walking is a priority within our policies and our strategies that it's on the agenda on the political agendas and on agendas in Greater Manchester of all 10 of those local authorities we also need to then think about well actually what about health you know there's massive health benefits so it's making sure that whether it's public health population health that they're prioritizing walking and they're encouraging people to and they're thinking about ways that they can also support more people to get out and to walk more. Um, that we're thinking about those those big cultural norms that we need to shift. You know that the idea that car is king, uh, and actually we know that getting out of the car, going for a walk, is brings a whole lot of benefits, as we said, for people, the place, um, the planet, and also to our purse. Um, shifting some of those uh, again ideas around, you know, the weather's the weather's too bad. You know, we just put a big coat on, don't we? Uh, we take an umbrella, we put our waterproofs on. How we just normalise the idea that we can get out and actually we can really enjoy a walk, whatever the weather, whatever the day, whatever the place, whatever the time. Um, there are, you know, some significant cultural norms that get in the way that mean that walking is accessible to everyone. So things like um, levels of maybe hate crime, lack of sense of safety that we know particularly impact on some members of our community. So particularly women and girls, for example, are less likely to go out and enjoy a walk in the dark because of a sense of not feeling safe. Uh, and particularly in some parts, maybe in Greater Manchester. Um, so we need to make sure that we're, we're tackling those big cultural norms in order to shift um, those, that narrative um, and, you know, re, yeah, experience that some people have um, and make it possible for them to, to get out and enjoy um, a good walk and enjoy the, the physical environment that we do have and those great spaces that we have. And to do all of that, means engaging with all those different organizations institutions you know like yourself so some who are already believers they already believe in walking they're already playing a part and um, to help them see how they can work together with others so that we're, we're more than the sum of our parts in, in collectively moving this agenda forward 
and, and then also bringing on board others who maybe this is the top of their agenda you know what about some of our businesses and um, I just spent a week with with faith leaders across greater Manchester thinking about how walking you know could be a really important part of them taking action on climate change and, and encouraging their members and um, maybe to walk um, to the mosque or to church or to the synagogue or to um, Gurdwara um, and how that can be again um, a very kind of spiritual journey how we encourage our schools uh, support more young people obviously to walk just for them back and then how we can encourage them to then get out with their family and enjoy our green spaces um, so engage with all those different organizations those social networks that we know you know a key to, to people feeling the for them that they see other people that they know and they trust um, are going out and and then there's more individual kind of motivations and capabilities and opportunity you know do people have the knowledge about how where to go how they can get there what are their own access needs um, do they have access for example to a mobility suite uh, or to more active wheelchair or to bike um, and all those things that people need to have you know to shoes to dry shoes that are going to keep their feet warm and a warm jacket and um, so all of these things make a difference and that's our mission to influence all of those um, we also know that there are to make that change across the whole of greater manchester we've discovered through the work um, that there's a few key things that are really critical to helping create the conditions for change. So these are these what we call five key enablers. And this is effectively like a kind of codification um, of what we've seen makes a difference in the work of the kind of key patterns. So none of these are probably a big shock to you. You know, we need to involve local people. Um, people know, you know, what matters to them, what are the local routes, what local places they want to go to. We need to hear, you know, what is it? Where do they want to go? What sort of walk do they want to go on? Um, and how do we make things work for them? And really grow those local assets, you know, make sure that everybody um, can access local green spaces and routes. Um, it's not just for some people and address that current inequity um, in access across the city region. Um, and then how do we provide that kind of strategic leadership for more collective distributed leadership? So, you know, I think the society is a good example, isn't it? If you've got a core mission, you've got a shared interest, and then each of you as individuals can all play your part as citizens in going out and noticing when, you know, pathways are blocked and need to be cut back. Um, and that's a great way in which you've been able to mobilise lots of people to help to play their role in order to make those pathways more accessible for more people more of the time. And um, bringing together, working across, and a lot of my time convening different partners to come together so that we've got, you know, people who are working greater in planning and, and development uh, are coming together with people in health to go, how do you embed health into our planning and make sure that those policies recognize the importance of when thinking about place and our built environment that we're designing in you know what does good walkable city region look like how do we make that greener healthier happier place for everybody and that those different sectors need to work together not in their silos and all of this means transforming a lot of those governance and processes things that often can get in the way so you know it'd be great to hear from you you know what does good look like so when you report an issue and those processes are seamless and you get feedback to know that it's been reported and it's been logged and then you see action take place or when does it feel really challenging and actually there's that frustration that you see and you're hearing that this matters but you know whether it's a local authority or it's others who are you know seemingly in power they don't feel as though things move forward quickly enough um, and there's a kind of disconnect between what people have said and actually what happens on the ground so how do we make sure that our systems and processes actually work um, for us and then that constant how do we keep learning and adapting as we go um, so that's our kind of GM moving approach as a whole uh, this just then translates in terms of our work specifically around making more walkable Greater Manchester, so GM uh, walking. And again, we've got a little animation, um, so you can stop listening to me and listen to this for a minute. There we go. Increasing physical activity is great for both physical and mental health. It combats depression and loneliness, saves money, lives, 
and potentially the planet. Greater Manchester walking ambition has been developed to enable the greatest number of people possible to walk routinely for pleasure, for travel, for themselves and for the environment. Because when it comes to getting people to move more in Greater Manchester, walking may be the best way to get there. Walking is a popular activity and can be made inclusive and accessible for everyone to enjoy. It's sociable, safe and relaxing. It's not expensive and doesn't take much to get started. As human beings, we all want to feel the air on our faces, the wind in our hair, the sense of freedom that walking can bring. When you plan how to get from A to B or just what to do with a bit of free time, there's lots of influences on your decision to walk or not to walk. Some might seem completely unrelated, but are important in the moment. Some are beyond our control, but most of these influences can be influenced if decision makers at every level consider making walking safer, easier and more fun as part of their role. With any complex problem, it's hard to know where to start and one group of people working in one area probably isn't enough to make a measurable difference. They say that a journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step, but to tip the balance in favour of walking, we need lots of people in lots of different areas to take a lot of small steps together. Whether strolling, pushing, wheeling or roaming, it all matters. We're already having some success through our apps and social media through Walking Champions, the Greater Manchester Way campaign and the GM Daily Mile Toolkits. There are festivals and events, websites and animations. There's been more than 80 community investment fund grants for voluntary organisations and some massive infrastructure investments from our partners in Transport for Greater Manchester. The next step is up to you. If you're watching this, it's because you have the power to help. Whatever your level of influence, we want walking on your agenda. So that as policymakers, funders, commissioners, community groups, schools, families and individuals, we can pull together to make walking in Greater Manchester something to be proud of. So we're asking you to think about the work that you do and what you can do to make it easier for people to choose being active, to choose to make Greater Manchester a happier and healthier place and choose to make walking part of their everyday life. If you'd like to find out more or to get more involved, please visit www gmwalking.co.uk today. So that gives you, yeah, a summary of our approach. Um, obviously, I'm speaking to the converted here, so I'm not seeking to convert you all to walking here. You are playing your role and you know it matters but that's helped us to go into different rooms um, and to help push walking up the agenda for other people and partners across the system. Um, just, you know, in summary, so across each of those layers, and I won't go through this now, you know, we're, we're conscious of the different ways, as I said before, that in each of those we need to take action um, to make walking, cycling, wheeling and active travel um, a norm and, and accessible for everybody. Um, so there's a number of ways in which we're doing that, and the video refers to some. So first of all, I guess at a, at a kind of strategic level, we have a group called GM Walking Voice, which brings partners together who care about walking um, to, to work collectively in order to, again, advocate for walking, to influence policy, um, and to coordinate as well the actions that we take. Um, so 
you know, one of my conversations, you know, David earlier today is to go, you know, let's make sure that society is represented within that as well. And, you know, the members that want to get involved um, and work alongside others. I think that's great um, to do. And um, we also, the video refers to festival. So um, May is the next GM moving, uh, GM walking festival. So we've got over 250 walks that are being organised over the month of May throughout um, the whole month from different groups across Greater Manchester. And you can see all of those on the GM Walking website um, with an invitation for people that want to join a walk. And, you know, again, this is a great way for people maybe who are new to walking or they're new to the area uh, and, you know, for them, being supported by others to access a new area, getting to meet new people is a great way in which we're going to kind of introduce them to some of our fantastic um, walking routes and, and make that something that hopefully then becomes more of a habit for them as well. Um, we've also got, you might be aware, so Dame Sarah Story is our um, I'll say new, but actually she's been involved for nearly a year now. Um, she's our new Walking Cycling Wheeling uh, Commissioner, or czar. so she took over from Chris Boardman a year ago. And we've been working closely with her um, in order to think about the, the kind of strategy going forward across Greater Manchester for active travel. Uh, and, you know, we launched back in November, an event that we organised, she launched her Refresh Commission. Um, which again, as you see there, is very much thinking about how we create, you know, spaces, streets, which are accessible for everybody, universally accessible, um, and how we make that cultural norm um, of the joy of the journey of walking, cycling, wheeling, um, and play on the way for everybody. We've got some very specific projects. Um, so around some of those kind of cultural norms that I referred to before, kind of some of the real challenges. So one of them, just a picked out, is, is called Right to the Streets. Uh, and actually this is a project that we've managed to get funded through the Home Office. It's not our normal route for funding, but that's just shows. And that's because one of the things we heard, as I said before, is that lots of people said the reason they didn't go out walking, or didn't go out walking maybe in the evening or at some time of the day, is because of a sense of not feeling safe to do so, um, and particularly women and girls. So this project is taking um, a whole system approach within um, a neighbourhood in, in North Trafford to really think about how do we actually make spaces and places feel safer so that more people can enjoy a walk on their own or with others um, throughout the year and throughout those winter months when actually daylight can be only for a limited period of the day. Uh, and, you know, in summary, there's a, I mean, there's a podcast coming out, you can listen to podcast conversations, there's a, a campaign, there's lots of brilliant things going on and lots of creative artistic interventions that are taking place. Um, but my headline summary in terms of what we've heard so far is the key thing that makes people feel safer is other people. So a sense of community, um, a sense of familiarity, seeing other people on those walking routes. So again, you know, all of you, whether you're out taking a walk for your own personal benefit or you're out there you know um as, as wardens really your presence and the presence of other people in places makes other people feel safer and they're more likely to go for a walk to enjoy a walk and to encourage others to walk so that real sense of the need to just keep encouraging each other to get out there is really important um, and the more we see people in their diversity as well so there's more people that look like you um, so therefore making them really inclusive and accessible so before I um, stop and we open up discussion, I've got one more video. So um, we talked before about this is about, you know, all of us walking in the GM, the GM way. Uh, so here we this go. This is where we walk, strutting our stuff to fill our lungs, clear our heads, or just get home and back in our beds. A good stroll's good for your northern soul. We all know it, even if other places don't get it. You see, round here, we just get out and walk. So let's do it more from now on. Whenever, wherever, find your way and see where it takes you. So just step ahead, stretch your legs, stride on, because that's the Greater Manchester way. Find local walking groups, routes and inspiration at gmwalking.co.uk. Thank you. So one of the things we've learned is that videos, stories like that, seeing images, of local people and local places really matters. 
that that resonates with people as opposed to, I guess, campaigns or messaging that feels quite detached and doesn't feel relevant to people in their place. Um, so we've got lots of different walking stories, um, plenty more I could share, but I told myself I'd finish talking at half past and it's 7.32, so I think that's a good time to open up um, the conversation and, and hear from yourself, if that's okay, David. 